I bought a wood chipper. It's used. I paid 850 bucks for it. The guy was asking 1200 bucks. He was really good to deal with, said it works all right. I've got that pile. I've got so many just stupid piles around, so let's work on getting rid of them. They obviously overfilled the oil a little bit. I pulled that just to check it, just to realize it's got a dipstick, but it doesn't smell like gasoline. He's like, you should probably change the oil. I don't know. It looks a little dirty. Let's run it for a bit, just make sure I'm not wasting my time with this thing. I'm guessing. He started it for me. It flashed right out. There has to be an adjustment on the knives and they must be worn out because it should eat this no problem. Here's inside of it. You can see there's one of the knives and it's not very sharp so it might just need to be sharpened. <laughs> okay, there's inside a machine and there's the only knife so let's see if we can access that. There's a panel here that might do it. And this might do it. I don't know which one yet. For the record, I bought this used. They retail for twelve hundred American dollars U.S. There's nuts in behind. Okay, it's a little unethical, but there was an access plate at the back that allowed me to go through and get all three.
and we're back in business. I'm not gonna lie, that was a bit ignorant. Hard to get in, hard to get out. Okay, try this again. <laughs> it's not that great, to be honest. It's out of fuel.
two things I've learned. It's really loud. Buddy was right to recommend earmuffs. And it does eat trees from the bottom up. Maybe I should try the dead one now. Now that I realize from the bottom up works. Um, yeah, a good majority of this, that should be able to process. And to turn two and a half trees into a pile that big is pretty incredible. I would love to be able to bring this thing on a job site where I've got nothing but time because I'm sure that it's I'm sure that it's really efficient in the gas department, but I'd be hauling these trees away in the dump truck and I'd maybe get a hundred of those in a truck, for example, where I could maybe get two or three hundred scoops like that. I don't know, maybe it's maybe it's worth it if I'm just doing brush. We'll see. So anyway, so far my impressions are not that impressed. However, it does do the thing. I'll let you know after I'm done dealing with a lot of this. Well, I gotta be honest, I'm not as impressed with this thing as I thought I would be. Um, hope it wasn't a waste of money. 
barely touch the pile and uh yeah stuff like that this should be easy it's not even really eating i get i guess i understand these it's quite large but these i can turn into firewood so it's not that big of a deal but um put this one on top i don't know i would have thought it would have eaten it better i've got new blades from amazon coming if that makes this thing that much better i'll post a video with those installed if it doesn't, I'm going to call this video done here, and, uh, well, thanks for watching. I'm going to go throw this in the garden. Hope for a full bucket by now, but yeah. <laughs> Might have been a bit much for it. Yeah, see it's good though, it's not strong enough to pull this stuff through, so it doesn't it doesn't get really stuck, you know. Some of stuff stuck in here too. That's probably not helpful. ignorant when it gets stuck getting it unstuck and obviously it's a learning curve if you put something too big in the top it just sucks it in you gotta hold it back Jeez, that's terrifying.
feel like everything in this pile it should be able to do without too much effort. The biggest I've got in here is three fingers across, so two inches, two and a half inches. I don't know, it shouldn't have any trouble, we'll see what it does.
I, I guess if you're doing what I'm doing, I don't really recommend it necessarily. It's a little bit small. I was hoping to get through size like uh, what I've got over there, but it is it is doing three inch and two inch if you're patient with it. Is it worth 850 bucks? No, I don't think so. But if you could find a used one for $500, I think go ahead. That's what I was trying to spend, but the guy wouldn't come down. Anyways, it's nice to have my pile of wood cleaned up. Two points I want to make. I sharpened the blade again, and instead of having an inverse curve, I sharpened the edge again so it was like a razor. That was my fault on the bench. I hit both sides with the grinder. I should have hit just the one. This thing's not so bad. You can actually feed big logs into it. You gotta, you saw me there, you gotta be careful, and if you feed too much, it stalls. Starts back up easy with a fresh blade because it's not just tearing things around in there. It's actually chipping them up and it's just stalling because of lack of power. I'm gonna put a big motor on this thing, I think. Stay tuned for that. If you watch to the very end here, I don't know why you would. Half an hour of your life wasted on watching me chip wood, but I really appreciate it. Hit that like, hit that share button, I guess, guys. Help me out. It all started here. This just wouldn't cut it. And that's a sad excuse for a chainsaw. So here we are in the 21st century. If you buy this, you get an extra year of warranty. Yeah, I bought a brand new chainsaw. Let's see how this works. Just a nice little tool pack to give you. Walk the way solid.
Oh yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it. There's absolutely no adjustments needed with this saw. Uh, crazy. So any new two-stroke engine I buy, I make sure that I break it in by letting it idle until it's hot and then cooling it down until it's cold. Repeating that two or three times and then I'll take it outside and repeat the process on a tree. Get it as hot as I can, cutting into a tree, let it cool off afterwards. And um, three or four times and it's uh, broken in, as far as I'm concerned. I've done that with every two-stroke engine I know, I've owned, whether it be a snowmobile, chainsaw. Uh, that's all I can think of at the moment, but uh, it's worked for me. Okay, here we have a tree that's larger than four inches. My Crocs about 13 across so we got a 12 13 inch tree okay the goal just to break in the saw let's see how it works out I think I'm happy with this. It's a pretty, pretty good saw. That was a big stick. If you bark into it, you can actually stall it out. But my 361 was at least 10 or 15 percent less power than this. And apparently, these break in in about three months of good hard use, and they get stronger. So we will see.
So I guess I want to put a light bar on it because I think that stops them from dipping in the front. However, the balance feels exactly the same as my old MS-360 one. Oh, what? Why? Let's try that. But look at this. It is actually balanced. I thought it felt pretty good. It just doesn't uh, doesn't sit on the back, but I like that balance. That's that's cool. So this is a 24 inch bar. This is the bar I've ran on my MS-361. I tried it on, on my MS-360. Anyways, this is why I like a 24 inch bar. You see how I'm not touching the ground? So I don't really need to look when I'm cutting trees up. But look how close I am. I'm within like a quarter inch. It just, it works out perfectly. Like a 25 inch bar would be too long for me, so. Here's the 24. I might try a 25 inch light bar because I see those advertised online because it does hang the saw just, just a bit forward. It's not, it's not bad. It feels the same as my 361, which I ran over with the excavator. So, happy to have this. Let's try it out. <laughs> That's better. this so uh, this thing's pretty cool i tried to cut into that burl where the squirrel's nest is there with my little saw and it angered me so i gave up and, and this has been sitting here for six months if i hadn't have run over my good ms361 but i've got my 362 now we'll see how this thing holds up i'm excited 
And you see how the 24 inch bar just perfectly for my height. I'm six foot four. And for my height, I can just barely, barely avoid the ground. Like within an inch, maybe half an inch. So a lot of these sticks I can just meep right against the ground. And I can be confident as long as my hand is on the bar that I can't hit the ground, period. So that's come in handy for me for years and I'm happy to see the saw plays with that. If you've ever wondered what's in a squirrel's nest, it's just uh, dead debris and stuff and this sits in the trees and they use this to build bases on, I guess. Oh yeah, we're a fan of this chainsaw. So half the reason I bought this saw is I've got a lot of these little sticks that will fit through the chipper. However, they need trimming. And my little saw is okay, but I'm bent over and I'm hurting my back. The Husky 235, I cut some big trees with it, but this, oh my God, this, this thing's just so much better, so. I guess I ran it out of gas, but so far, so far 10 out of 10. The saw is spectacular. Okay, so the project at hand today is getting this greenhouse garden area more light. It's 11 in the afternoon. These trees are still shading the sunflowers, so it's like that all morning. The sun rises over here, so every one of these trees is blocking all of this until 11. the excavator's assistance for the white one that's an aspen tree they're known for breaking off halfway up but it's leaning directly over my uh my garden and if i cut it where it is guaranteed it's going that way so i want it to come this way i guess i'll just turn all this into firewood it's not millable be good kindling size split it once or twice and send it i'll let it season and sell it hopefully and all the branches i'll be able to chip with my wood chipper
I don't want to squish my dump truck or throw a branch into it. And I'm not 100% sure how tall that is. Oops, that's very stuck in these trees. I'm gonna get the excavator over here somehow, I guess. I guess they're gonna get rained out for a few minutes. Maybe it's time I call it. That means lightning. I also got notifications on my phone for lightning. About 10 miles south, not even two miles south.
thing when you sell it is the worst. in four-wheel drive. That's the only thing I don't like about Polaris. If it's in neutral, the, the four-wheel drive free wheels. Ridiculous. Anyways, that's tight now. All right, come on, Polaris, do better. Got to hit record, but it's on the ground. And other than my rhubarb being buried way up in there, hopefully not damaged, it's on the ground. That almost went south. That's fine. Okay, now that that big tree's down, I have an incredible amount of bucking and chipping to do. So, I will put you on time lapse for what the camera takes. Otherwise, I'll be back when I'm done.
Well, it's a few weeks later here. It's a look. September 21th. September 21th today. So I'm gonna end this video here. I've got all the trees out and as you can see um, winter comes in really early here so September end of September is kind of like uh, we're freezing already. We've got frost a few times but the garden really appreciated the extra light that we gave it. The wood chipper I can't really say that I love it. I think it was kind of a waste of money for me to be honest. I might sell it. It does produce nice wood chips and uh, I, I was spreading them in a couple of beds just to test it and see if stuff still grew when you when you chip fresh stuff it's got all the sap and everything so it'll change the ph levels and stuff in your soil anyways i wanted to try it and see how it did the sunflowers don't seem to mind but it keeps the soil underneath a lot moister for a lot longer so you don't have to water it constantly but anyways yeah i'm gonna end the video on this wood chipper here i wouldn't recommend buying one to be completely honest with you if you have an acreage, maybe an acre or larger. I think you need a much bigger wood chipper than this. It's so labor intensive and time consuming that I ended up just restacking it all into a burn pile and I'll take care of that this winter when I'm good to burn again. I think if you have under an acre, you would probably be fine with a machine like this. I might play with it and stick a big motor on it. I've got a 10 horse or 11 horse electric start motor somewhere around that I could probably make fit, and then this might have the gumption to produce uh, less labor-intensive wood chips, I guess, is what I'm going for. I, I bought it because I thought the wood chips would be super useful for the garden and stuff, and I, I do think that, but I don't think it's worth the labor when it's it's just this difficult to, uh, to force-feed the stupid thing. But. The chainsaw I bought, giant fan of that. I love it, the MS-362. It runs flawlessly. Uh, you'll see it on future jobs as I take trees down and stuff in the future. So yeah, stay away from the small little wood chippers if you have acreage. But the garden really appreciated the extra sunlight and I really appreciate the views. Thanks for watching to the end, if you made it this far. If you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. It doesn't cost you guys a thing. We really need to get this channel up to at least a thousand subscribers for YouTube to even recognize me. They don't care about me. Help me out. Hit that button. Thanks for watching. Take care.